the stock has done very well this year, but earnings a few weeks ago were a pretty big letdown. What's actually happening beneath the surface? Well, our earnings, we actually beat on earnings and cash flow and earnings per share, and our sales were a little bit below what the street had expected, but we've got good momentum coming into this year, and our number one priority for the coming year is to return to organic sales growth. How do you do that? Well, first and foremost, with Blue Buffalo, um, the number one pet, pet food, food in the whole wholesome natural segment, it's grown eight to ten percent this this coming year, and maintaining growth on cereal, we've grown it two years in a row, and looking to do it for a third. Yeah, I wanted to dig in on cereal in particular. To it's sort of a declining, flattish category, but you guys have been making inroads against your competitor, Kellogg. H how do you do that? What does the consumer want with cereal these days? Yeah, we've been doing really well on cereal. We've grown it two of the last years, and we're going to do it again next year. And we're looking to do that through new product innovation. We've got great new product innovation like blueberry chur uh, Cheerios and Cinnamon Toast Crunch Cheerios, but also good, really good marketing our established businesses. We're growing Lucky Charms and Reese's Puffs and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Do we want sugary cereal? We want, we want cereals that taste good. And Americans are snacking more than ever, and General Mills has a lot of great-tasting cereals, and so they're doing really well. Do you think the category ever comes back to its glory days? Well, it's improved sequentially eight quarters in a row, and we're, really what it takes is, is responding to consumer demand, and that's the reason we've been able to grow it, because we responded to consumer demand better than our competition has the last couple of years. We actually have this sort of a similar conversation with Mondelez on Oreos. You take a, a franchise brand and you try to splinter it into a bunch of different varieties like you've done with Cheerios. How far can you take that before it starts getting silly? Well, the key is to make sure you remain true to the true to the brand. And so, Cheerios is a brand that people have trusted since uh, since 1941. And blueberry Cheerios is another great tasting variety. But while you're doing that, you have to market Honey Nut Cheerios. So we're we're marketing Honey Nut Cheerios, talking about cholesterol lowering properties of Honey Nut Cheerios, and the great taste. The the key is to do both at the same time. Introduce new varieties and grow the things you've always is, had. Is cereal taking share from yogurt or oatmeal or any of the other uh, breakfast foods? Well, cereal is, is back to about flat. Our cereal business is growing. Uh, we returned our yogurt business to share growth this past year, and uh, we're looking to improve upon that this coming year with some really good new product innovation. You mentioned Blue Buffalo, of course, being important to the growth initiatives at the company. Uh, I'm curious, it's only about a week ago, but dog owners, I'm sure, noticed these reports from the FDA in terms of an investigation between a link between heart disease and any number of pet foods, including Blue Buffalo. A, what do you say to that, and B, is it having any impact on sales? Well, the Blue Buffalo business is, is growing really nicely. First and foremost, uh, for us, is the safety of our products and, and the nutritional value for pets. That's how Blue Buffalo was started, to make sure we make nutritious pet food. And so we are confident in the quality of our product. Having said that, we continue to work with the FDA to make sure that there's not something uh, behind the scenes that we don't understand. Uh, yeah, can you give us a sense here as to our expectations? You may have to change the, the composition of the product in some way if this continues to be something that is a concern to the FDA? Uh, we don't really think so at this time because we, we've tested all of our products, all of our recipes, and they meet the nutritional credentials that, that dogs need and that pet parents are looking for. And so at this moment in time, we're, we're very satisfied with what we've seen. And with you our don't products. think they're causing heart disease? We do not. So, I mean, they definitely got a lot of attention. It was a big, splashy acquisition for you, $8 billion. And we've seen the growth there, I think 38% last quarter. But then now you get to some tough comparisons and some tough, tough overlaps. What are you going to do differently than the previous management, which grew Blue Buffalo into a pretty well-established and well-loved brand? Well, we're, we're, the previous management has done a great job with Blue Buffalo, and they're terrific brand builders, and that's at the heart of what we do as well. So we've got a very good relationship with the, with the people who founded Blue Buffalo. In fact, Billy Bishop is still running the, the Blue Buffalo business. The, the thing I would say, we're going to continue to grow in our food, drug, and mass channel. Uh, we grew triple digits in, in places like Walmart and Publix and Kroger and Meyer. We'll continue to do that, but we'll also continue to innovate. And one of the things that we're most excited about is combining the expertise of Blue Buffalo and Pet with the general Mills innovation capabilities. So what does that mean? Healthier snacks for dogs? Well, the, the humanization of pet foods. People people want to feed their pets like they feed other members in the family. And so a lot of the things that we do for human food, we can do the same kind of things in pet food while we provide the nutrition that pets really need. And when it comes to humans, there seems to be more of a focus, particularly perhaps amongst millennials, but just in general, about sugar intake and concerns about that. We mentioned sugary cereals, which seem to be doing well, but what are you doing across the portfolio, particularly in things like yogurt, which we've talked about as well, to reduce sugar? Sugar, if in fact that's something consumers seem to want. Yeah, I would start with cereal, and we've reduced sugar in our cereals over the last number of years. In fact, in all of General Mills cereals, whole grain is actually the number one ingredient. It's not sugar, even in things like cinnamon toast crunch or Lucky Charms. And in yogurt, we've we've offered varieties that are lower in sugar and higher in protein. Things like YQ. 
uh, which is uses some ultra filtration technology. And so we, one of the reasons General Mills has been around 150 years is that we continue to adapt to consumer changes. And yet, you know, Frito Lay this morning post 5% organic revenue growth in snacks, and snacks was actually a disappointing part of your portfolio, at least in the last quarter. In the last quarter, it was. And last year, it was. We didn't we didn't innovate the way we needed to in uh, in our bars business here in the U.S. Even though we're growing double digits in bars outside the U.S. In the U.S., we didn't interview, inter innovate very well, and we also didn't execute very well. And we're confident we'll get back on track. We've got a, a new product where we've just launched called Wafer Bars that are uh, from Nature Valley, and they are really tasty. So oh, cereal bars are. Dead, huh? Sorry, I'm always interested when a CEO says we didn't execute well. How do you identify what went wrong and fix it? Well, the, the team themselves are the ones who identified it. And, you know, one of the things that we're really pleased with is, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a team, it's a team sport at General Mills. And the team that was launching bars said, look, we just didn't execute our marketing plans the way we didn't want it to. We didn't execute the innovation we wanted to. And that's how we know what we need to do to turn it around. And we're confident Nature Valley is the number one bar in the bar category. And we're confident that we can turn around the performance of that. Still, there's this perception among big food companies, packaged food companies, that they've been late to the innovation game, to the consumer changes, consumer habits, and we're still not seeing the top line growth that, that you guys are chasing. And it's not just General Mills, it's a lot of these companies. What is it about the big structure that, that's making it so difficult to keep up with those changes? Well, the key is what you said is innovating. And we've innovated internally with things like We Buy Yo Play, which is the number one yogurt launch in the last many years in the yogurt category. We've also made acquisitions like Blue Buffalo and Annie's and Lara Bar. And so for me, the key to innovating is make sure we innovate internally as well as we buy, as well as buying growth companies and expanding on their growth. I mean, we've doubled the size of Annie's since we've owned it and we, we grew Blue Buffalo double digits last year. So for me, the key in growth is making sure we grow internally while looking outside for all kinds of different innovations. It's been a crazy planting season for American farmers. Uh, corn's way behind. Do, do you see the pendulum swinging on, on grain or raw material costs? Uh, we see raw material costs growing mid-single digits this next year. And a, a couple months ago, I think people thought that inflation for food companies would be a lot lower. We don't really see that. We don't see it being a lot higher, but we also don't see it be a lot lower. We think our inflation will probably be about 4% next year, and raw materials are probably what will drive most of that increase. Are you sourcing from any different parts of the world for any variety of reasons, trade or, or just the ag season in general? Um, no, we're, we, we're, we keep sourcing from the same places we always have, and, and any, any challenges in trade really haven't had a big impact on our, our business. You know, speaking of farming, there are these reports that Cheerios and Nature Valley contain Roundup weed-killing ingredients. I mean, is that having an impact on sales? How are you dealing with that issue and that mess? No, it's not, it really hasn't had an impact at all. And, and you know, the, F, the FDA, the EPA, they have they have really strict guidelines for you know how much pesticides can residue can be present in food. And our food falls way below those safety limits. And so our consumers, by and large, are not concerned. Why with, are with there? That. Why, why is that showing up in foods? Well, be, because. At least it owes people use it to dry out the crop after afterwards. So there's a very very small amount measured in parts per uh, parts per million. So there, there's really a very small residue. And finally, how would you describe the consumer macro environment overall? You know, what you're dealing with issues on pricing, consumer spending. You have an international business. What does it all look like? I would say in the U.S., the consumer environment is quite good, and we're seeing a little bit of we're seeing a little bit of pricing in our categories, and demand is strong. Our categories are back to growth. We're actually back to growth. Outside the U.S., our business in China is growing. Our business in Brazil is growing. The toughest part for us has been Europe, and uh, you know, is it Brexit? Is it not Brexit? And dealing with that, that's probably been the toughest area of the world for us. And finally, you know, General Mills has been a winner. I mentioned in the market, it's a dividend payer. It, I think it benefits from doing a lot better than some of its competitors right now. I'm thinking of a Kraft Heinz or a Campbell Soup. What, how do you see those cautionary tales? Well, in the long term, if you're a food company, you need to grow. You need to grow your top line. Yes, you need to be more efficient. Yes, you need to watch your costs. But you need to innovate. You need to keep consumers in mind. And you need to grow your top line sales for the long term. You don't think everybody's doing that? Uh, not yet, but we are.